and I'm talking of now um, a time period of around early 90s, you know, when uh, Marico began to cover the consumer products business of Bombay Oil Industries, we started exporting to markets where hair oiling habit existed, uh, and it existed mainly in uh, neighboring countries and Middle East markets. Mm. And we, I was very keen that we become a far more international company. Uh, and be present in many other uh, territories beyond just neighboring geographies. So it was very important for us to grow outside India because uh, I was looking at companies, multinationals who were in FMCG and when it came to attracting talent, they were able to offer individuals a posting outside India. Hmm. And I think that would be a very important uh, vehicle for attracting talent if you had some other uh, openings outside India. So our uh, desire to go international was multifold. One was to get higher growth, another is to get some outside in, in terms of what is happening in other markets and can it be relevant for India. And number three, to post our talent outside so they get an exposure internationally. And by then globalization, trends and that, all that began. So I wanted to go beyond that and um, uh, we were not able to do that because our business of hair oils was the only thing which could get uh, exported and traction mm -hmm. internationally. So we said that what else can get traction in other markets and one of the things which we identified was Ayurveda, you know, mm -hmm. because Ayurveda is Indian and uh, we were able to uh, acquire a company which was based on principles of Ayurveda in New York. Mm -hmm. And they were supplying uh, Ayurvedic products to the spa industry. This is Sundari that you This is Sundari. Uh, and uh, we thought that we would be able to add value. Uh, yeah. We were able to add value. We were able to increase turnover. But it was a different business model. You know, we were experienced in managing a fast-moving consumer goods which had mass distribution, which meant mass advertising on television or mass media. Uh, but this was meeting consumers, spa owners on a B2B basis. So from B2B, C, B2C, we went to B2B. And it was a completely different business and we went through a huge learning curve. And uh, we realized that uh, looking at the distance of operating in US compared to India, we were just not getting that traction in terms of turnover. So we, we sold off that business. I think in 2009, if yeah. I'm not wrong, yes. But the key learning was, can you identify some other categories where you can grow? Mm -hmm. uh, so we identified some other categories, which are what we call pre and post wash hair care or ethnic hair care. And we were able to acquire companies in Egypt, in South Africa, in Vietnam, in FMCG space. So the business model remained same, mm -hmm. but uh, we changed the, some of the product categories we were uh, present in uh, through acquisition. Then I think that's worked out well. And so I, I, the, the point you told me when we were discussing this, and you said that uh, it's important to remember that you can't force fit a new business model into your existing business model. Um, but often a lot of corporate acquisition or a lot of corporate or, you know, expansion yes. is driven on being able to uh, cash in on a new either category of products like you did eventually or a new way of doing business. Yes. So why in this case did it not work for you? Was it a company mindset? Was it something that you didn't care to be able to scale beyond a point? What was it? So I would say two or three. One is the company mindset of dealing in B2C versus B2B. We didn't and have any experience. You couldn't in change B2B. it, but there was no way and to learn tried, from your acquisition. We, we tried doing it. But number two, I think more importantly, the the scope of that business in the US we thought would be much more. People would buy into Ayurveda story at that time. But it was, the traction was low. We were not only selling the spas, the, the Ayurvedic products, but also teaching them Ayurvedic ways of doing massage and all that, you know. So you were a little ahead of your time in that way? Uh, you could say that to some extent, yes. But today because it's Ayurveda very popular. Is, Ayurveda. <laughs> is caught on yeah. Ayurveda yoga, but at that time it was, maybe it was a little bit ahead of time also. Okay, so that's not really quite, I mean, it's a market timing failure, but it's not a Many failure. Many times failures could be because of market timing. You're okay. absolutely right. Yeah. Have you had other experiences where you've attempted to, through an acquisition or through a new expansion, change business model, but that hasn't worked? Because that was a point that you repeatedly came back to when we were doing some of our pre-conversation. So one other business we went into was Kaya Skin Clinics. Yes. Which was a different business model. Completely, a service bar, yeah, so model as opposed to, to a goods model. We went through a huge learning curve there. Yes. We made some mistakes and... Uh, we made a lot of mistakes which could have been avoided if we knew how to manage a service business because it is very different than the consumer product business. So I think my key advice to entrepreneurs if your business model changes dramatically, you have to have a new team, you have to have 
competences which have worked with you rather than trying to send people from your existing business to that new business because the skills, competences required in a new business are very, very different. Your mindset as an entrepreneur also has to be very, very different. And uh, I think we made some mistakes and we could have easily avoided those mistakes in Kaya.